I don't know that we've ever been properly introduced. I'm Justin Elliott. And I'm Jesse Elliott. Not to be confused with Jensen Ackles. And Jared Padalecki. Like I'm Batman. Uh, we are going to review today, as you can probably see by the title of this video by now, uh, Final Destination 5. I never watched it. Final Destination 5. Um, Give it a chance, because give we know that the Final Destination was the final epic, horrible, retarded, stupid. Alright, I know what you're thinking already, because I myself have thought it. We've all thought it by now. Um, when is it going to end? Or they keep making sequels, same old thing, blah blah blah. Despite some of the actors that just get thrown in there, what's that guy's name from the comebacks and everything, it's just, I, I don't know, it's don't, hard to take Miles, him seriously. Miles but he's more of a Miles Fisher, Miles Fisher, I believe. I don't know. Maybe I'm completely wrong. He's in there. Uh, we got a good actor for the main character. We, you might know him from Fired Up, or he's in an episode of Supernatural, and he's in some heroes. Thanks. New upcoming actor, not not great at what he does, but he's I like not him. bad either. He's pretty good. You know, still likable. He's my friend Eric Snedeker's favorite actor of all time. Nicholas Delgastio. Uh, that's his name. Nicholas Delgastio is the main character here, and he's the um, we're tired of female lead characters in the Final Destination series. <laughs> they need to stop having premonitions. Premonitions of PMSing or something. <laughs> like, I don't know. I know that technically we're, you know, three of them were male, but uh, we don't count the fourth one. <laughs> it was just <laughs> too bad. We were just kind of hoping that one wasn't even premonition. Yeah, we don't get on and die. <laughs> we don't. We don't count that one in the series. That's kind of like. Uh, Jason X in the Jason Friday the 13th series. You don't count that when you say I love. Even Friday the 13th fans, when they say I love Friday the 13th, they're like, what are you talking about? That movie never happened. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, it it stars Nicholas Delgacio, and he plays the lead character that has premonition, and this time it is with the suspension bridge collapse yeah. and it's it, cool uh we get a little bit of cameos from things we've seen in the earlier final destination films like the ladder and everything are you talking about the beginning or what are you talking about the beginning yeah it shows the logs and everything from the truck and whatnot it shows the ladder from the second movie there's a uh, the stone from the forest, which his favorite, if you can't tell. So, a bunch of different stuff. You know, what are you basic talking about? Building, I think. I don't know. What are you talking about? What are you talking about the stone? <laughs> that gets hit in the lawnmower. On the fourth you movie. See that? In the beginning. What are you talking about? I'm talking about during, the opening credits. I'm talking about during the movie. Oh, what, do you, what kind of cameo is you talking about? That black guy that always shows up and. <laughs> What I'm trying to say is, uh, you get a you get a few nods, like nods to uh, the original movies, which is cool if you're a fan of the series. Who are we getting ourselves? Let's talk about the death. Huh. The death. Of now Final this bridge scene Five. though in the first one, uh, it, it's a little bit different from all the rest, which is good because you kind of get sick of is this another car? Or is this another stupid plane crashing? And there's only so much you can do with them. It wasn't really stupid, but you know what I mean. You can be skeptical. What can you really do on a bridge? But they really, they really go the extra mile to think of these other deaths and whatnot on this bridge. So it's actually pretty cool, I guess. It all kind of happens pretty fast. Uh, you know, you can't top the the second movie, the giant Route 180 the crash and whatnot. Second movie owns for the opening. Overall, I think they did a pretty good job doing that. Yeah, the the opening to this movie, the bridge collapse, it's amazing. It is. It's pretty good. Um, I don't know how else to say it other than amazing. Um, it's probably my second favorite opening disaster to the Final Destination series. Don't watch the previews. If you're watching this before you watch previews, which I, I doubt it, but try and cut the previews. Uh, don't watch them because... Don't watch them again. 
Yeah, yeah. They will, they'll spoil it for you, really. I mean... I never watch previews anymore. I look up when a movie's coming out, and, you know, with the exception of if I have no idea what the movie is. If it's a horror film, I don't watch previews, because they tend to give everything away in the previews. Yeah. Which, which, is, which is pretty lame for some people, because it, it really does ruin the movie. And if you... If you know you want to see this movie before you've seen the previews, I would avoid watching any previews because it's a lot funner to go through without knowing, oh, I know this is going to happen. It's really a great experience. Pretty cool. Um, One thing I do have against this movie, uh, some of the characters, I mean, you know they're going to die and you don't really have that attachment to them, but that's the thing. They don't really get, you don't really get attached excuse me, to these characters, you don't really care if they live or die, some of these people. Uh, and until towards the end, you start to care a little bit, like all movies. But not very strong actors. I feel like they gave a bunch of noobs a chance in this movie. With the third and fourth one, they really weren't all that serious and in-depth with character development. But I think that the fifth movie... The fifth movie sets a new standard, almost, if you want to say that. It's back in the right step, as opposed to the third and fourth movie. It's closer to the, it's closest to the original two that we've seen yet. This was one of my favorite Final Destination movies, just because of everything. Uh, the main actor did a lot for me, because, I mean, I liked him in previous movies, and think, I thought he did a good job, but uh, the deaths in this movie were pretty good. Uh, some of them you do, you just kind of don't see them coming. They're they're not as original. Some of them are okay, I guess, but you just kind of learn to love them. Uh, they just kind of get stuck in your head, and you just it might not be like right away when you watch it, you're like, oh my god, that was awesome. But you might be like, you know what? I actually really kind of like that. That's really cool, and it just kind of sinks in after a while. And by the end of the movie, you just you fall. I don't know. You, I I loved it. Uh, the ending of this movie was. Phenomenal, the best ending of any Final Destination movie I've seen. And I actually called the ending of this movie, if you recall, like Jesse, I called this movie, and it was pretty ridiculous. It was. So I, don't, I don't know how I did it, uh, but you'll see after you watch this movie. The, then. the ending has a pretty crazy twist. We won't spoil anything, but uh, it's good. It's an it's an awesome ending as far as the Final Destination series goes. They're not known for having very good endings. Yeah. You know, everyone watches the movies. They like the movies. They're known for their deaths. And uh, five is pretty amazing a lot because of the ending. The yeah. The ending's really good. The, and, the last uh, quarter of this movie really just gets your attention. Of, you know, it might be, it's kind of hard to take serious at first when you start watching this movie because you're just like, it's just another Final Destination movie. And you're just like, oh god, these more detectives are just gonna do the same thing over and over again. But as you start to keep watching and watching, you really, just get more and more and more involved into this movie. I it, mean, it really is different. I mean, they do mix it up a little bit. I wish they would take the plot further, as far as with things that have been brought up in previous Final Destination movies. But they're in the right direction right now, and I really do hope that they make more of them and. Take them in the right direction, as opposed to where three went down a little bit, but and then four just kind of dove it into the ground. <laughs> they're they're getting back up, and I hope that they I, take it away. This movie is in 3D, and I didn't watch it in 3D. Uh, I'd kind of like to, but I didn't need it for me. I I thought that it was good enough without 3D. Uh, if you get a chance to watch it in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe watch it. Did you watch it in 3D? I saw it in 3D. And I can tell you, this was the greatest 3D movie I had ever seen. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of 3D. I've seen that Pirates of the Caribbean I'll movie in 3D, and I wasn't a big fan. I did watch it afterwards without 3D, and I liked it still the same. But when I saw it in theaters in 3D, it was uh, awesome. It was definitely worth it, especially for me being a big fan of the Final Destination series. The very first Final Destination movie is one of my all-time favorite movies. And uh, it's not quite the same now, 
with all these sequels and knowing knowing what to expect. But when that movie first came out, and with those gruesome, random, anonymous, striking deaths when you never saw them coming, that will never, never change. Some of the deaths were kind of cheesy. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, but uh, I went to the special features afterward and watched an alternate death, and then it made me happy for some of the deaths that they did keep. It was kind of like, oh, that's their other option? I'm kind of glad they stuck with what they did. <laughs> yeah. It makes you appreciate it a little bit more. The first death, the first by death. far, is one of the best deaths. I just keep, yes. you, you don't know it hits you until it's bam. But it's kind of got that original feel like you don't know when. Yeah. And you're just waiting for it to happen. I mean, you don't give a crap, you know, what's going to happen. You just, I don't know, there's some scenarios in there that you just don't want to happen. There's a couple scenes where the CGI just looks really fake, but stick with it, and and yeah. definitely worth it. And definitely really worth good. it. Opening sequence, amazing, and the end was amazing. In between isn't terrible. There's ups and downs. Um they could, I think that some of the acting, though, had a big deal with that. You know, you either had a strong actor or kind of a weak actor. Uh, I feel like the female actors in this movie were kind of lacking, lacking their potential. I mean, I don't know if it was their script or whatnot, you know, if they weren't provided with a good enough script to lead them well, but uh, I I wasn't too impressed with the female acting in this movie at all, actually. Uh, but like like we said, the main character in this movie... He kind of carries the film. Something we have not addressed that clearly needs addressed. Tony Todd. <laughs> Tony Todd is back. Not really much we need to say about it, really. Yeah. I mean, it's Tony Todd. So. We haven't we haven't seen him since the second film. We know he did the voice acting in the third film for the devil statue outside the roller coaster, but that doesn't really count because he wasn't in the film. Um, but he's back. And he that doesn't count. <laughs> that means Morgan Freeman's out of like a hundred of his movies. That he did. <laughs> yeah. You can say that again. He definitely plays his role and plays it well. What's his deal anyway? Tony Todd. What's his deal? I think he likes death. I mean, <laughs> like he just maybe he is death. I mean, <laughs> he's just screwing with these kids. Like, they're all like little lab rats, and Tony Todd is like God, and he just comes down and. Hey, try this this time, you know? <laughs> they just, he just hopes he's watching and he fucking goes home and watches this shit. The one thing that irritates me about the films is that, that they have yet to bring back. In the first two films, you know, they get premonitions and they can avoid stuff. Like, the first film, Alex gets a premonition of a seatbelt ripping and he avoids death and cheats it, hinting that there's two forces conflicting with one another. One trying to save them and one trying to kill them. And it seems like after the second film, even kind of the second one a little bit, didn't really have screwed. it very much. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like this other force is kind of like, I just give up. <laughs> and Death just trying to kill them and they have no one helping them anymore. It's like, Except for Tony Todd. It's like <laughs> oh, Tony Todd. Where is that coming from? Tony they, Todd is that other force. It's like the black smoke and lost <laughs> on this. Like... They never go back into that. I'm going to say six and a half. It, it sounds kind of weak, but it's a Final Destination movie. I mean, it's you know what to expect. It doesn't really blow your mind, but at the same time, it's it's good enough that you want to watch it and you want to keep watching. So I'd say six and a half out of ten. I'm going to go with seven. Um, I was leaning toward an eight. But thinking about where this film could have gone as far as progression in the in the story as a trilogy rather than progressing in the story as the film and mm -hmm. uh, like it seems like they wanted this to work more as a standalone film and make more money, which it where, did, I which, think. Yeah, which it did, but it would have been nice if instead of just being as working as a standalone film if it could have progressed. And, uh, I'm going to, instead of eight, I think I'll give it a seven, thinking back on the, probably because of some of the cheesier effects, but and don't get me wrong, I loved the movie. 
And I don't know if that's just because I'm a fan of the series, like yeah. I said. Yeah, one and of my favorites better, so far. It is better than probably the third and definitely the fourth movie. If you're a fan of the series, I would watch this movie. I mean, I know you've lost all hope by the fourth film. But trust me, this film will give you something back. Take it to heart. Like HRG. <laughs> <laughs> There's our movie review. Say goodnight, Claire Bear. On the bright side, there were no off-screen kills like Alex from the first film.